Is there anything more pleasurable than staring a monster in the face as it roars its heart away? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think so. So I figured it was time to revisit our anti-bullshit build and make it even a little bit better, while also revisiting some Dual Blades builds as well. So I hope you guys all enjoy this video. It can be changed up a little bit depending on your playstyle. So let's go ahead and get into the equipment and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. For the purposes of showing this build off in the training area, I have eaten an attack up large meal and a mega demon drug, so that way you guys know what to use to compare your current build damage to this one if you so desire. We are using the fire and ice dual blades. Now I did also make a sin dual blades version of this build because it is a highly requested set of dual blades to use and it could not get anywhere near the damage that this does. So these are my favorite dual blades. You guys can use whatever you want. I'll show you the Sin Dual Blades build as well, just so you can have the comparison of the two. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Now, as I said, you can use any Dual Blades with this. Let's actually go into our decorations here and show you what we got equipped that way. So obviously we've got the Fire and Ice Dual Blades equipped with the Sharp Jewel 2. We've got the Wrath Soul Helm Beta, which gives us Critical Boost 1 and Stun Resistance Level 2 from the two Stun Resistance gems that we have socketed in here. Now we've also got the Rathalos Male Beta equipped in here, which gives us Weakness Exploit Level 2. And then we've got another Stun Resistance gem in here as well. Now, if you guys don't ever have issues getting stunned, if you're good at dodging or stuff like that, then you go ahead and take these gems out and replace them with more flat frost and blast jewels, which will increase your damage as well. Or you can even put grinder in there, but with sharp jewel, I don't really like running grinder that much. I like increasing our damage, uh, but you can really have whatever you want socketed in there. You can even put vitality, but since this is an anti-bullshit build and getting stunned is a load of bullshit, I've got it equipped in here. Now we're also using the Kaiser Vambraces beta, which gives us a weakness exploit level one. And then we've got a critical boost level one gem socketed into there. And then we've got the Basil Coil Beta, which gives us earplugs level 2, and we've got another Critical Boost Jewel socketed in there. Then we've got the Death Stench Heal Beta, which gives us Handicraft level 2. We've got an Ice Attack Gem and a Blast Attack. I don't know why I keep saying Gem, they're Jewels. Um, we've got an Ice Attack one and a Blast Attack. Now you can go with two uh, Ice or two Blasts, whatever you really want. Or you can even put Critical Eye in here or Attack Up and not really even worry about this, but um, we do get a decent increase in damage with the Ice Attack Jewels, so I'm going ahead and using those. So all in all, we've got Rathalos Mastery, which increases our elemental damage on crits by 3%. We've got Earplugs Level 5, which nullifies weak and strong monster roars. We've got Stun Resistance Level 3, which prevents stun completely. Critical Boost Level 3, which increases our critical hit damage by 15%. Weakness Exploit level 3 for the 50% affinity increase. Handicraft 2, Ice Attack, Blast Attack, and Protective Polish. Now for our charm, we are using the Earplugs charm, which gives you the three levels of Earplugs. That's how we're getting the five complete levels of Earplugs. Now for your mantles, you can equip whatever you want. I'm probably going to run Affinity Booster and maybe the Vitality Mantle. Actually, no, it would be the Steadfast uh, Rocksteady Mantle. There we go is what I would run with this, but you are welcome to use whatever you want. But let's go ahead and get into the damage in the training area for this. Now we do have the white level of sharpness with the protective polish. We get a full minute of sharpness without losing anything here, and we'll just show you the damage that this can do with just doing this one particular attack here, because it's easy to compare the top end damage for the build here. So on our crits with the right hand blade, we get a 55 damage crit. And on our left one, we're doing about 67. There we go, 67 and 55. And our final hit does quite a bit of damage as well. So 67 and 55. So that's the top end damage for the blade with the ice damage is 67. And the blast weapon is the 55. So quite a bit of damage. And then we can just go ahead and do a little bit of this as well. Now, if you actually do uh, two triangle attacks and then move the joystick left or right, you can just continuously attack with the dual blades, which can be quite devastating on a downed monster as well, and you don't get animation locked, which is quite nice. Now, I'll go ahead and go into the Sin build, and you'll see that it does quite a bit less damage, although you will crit about 10% more. 
So for the Sins Dual Blades build, we are using a non-elemental build with non-elemental boost, peak performance level 3, which you can also go with crit boost level 3. It's about the same performance and damage. Um, although with the crit boost 3, you will be getting higher peak damage with the crits. Uh, I don't have three crit boost gems. I only have two. And using two and one peak performance equates to the same amount of damage. You're only going to get more damage out of it if you're actually using three crit boost gems. So I'm just going ahead and using the peak performance. We've got weakness exploit level three, attack boost level five, and earplugs level five. So with this particular build, the way we've got it, we don't have the steadfast in here. And that was to maximize as much damage as I could get out of the dual blades. Now you could go with a similar build to the previous one although this one just has earplugs on it it doesn't actually have the steadfast so it's not as good as the fire and ice dual blades and it doesn't do as much damage either now you will be critting about uh, what is it actually 15 percent more um, but all in all even the higher damage on the crits isn't comparable to the fire and ice dual blades as well as the advantages of the more anti-bullshit on them uh, the other build is just a little bit better um, but I did want to show off, you know, I wanted to try and make this work with the Sin Dual Blades. Now, they are cool. They look really cool. I'm going to I'm gonna agree with that. Um, but everybody was bragging about how much damage they do. And I got to be honest, I'm not impressed. I finally made them. I didn't, I mean, I did the math and the numbers without ever making them. I knew they weren't going to be comparable in damage. Uh, but I went ahead and tried it anyways. But regardless... I'm going to make an actual Sin Dual Blades non-elemental build um, since, I mean, it's not even going to be as good as any of the other builds that I've got, um, but people like them a lot. So I'm going to actually make a really good uh, Sin Blade build here in the future. Um, I definitely think they've got some potential, especially with a 100% crit build, but you can do that with the Fire and Ice Dual Blades as well, which... I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. If you guys want an actual Sin build, I will do that. But this is more of an anti-bullshit build. And the Fire and Ice Dual Blades are definitely going to be much better for that. As well as... I mean, the Diabolus Clubs, I'm not a big fan of. They do more top-end damage. But the negative affinity on them is a major downfall. Also, also the same thing with the Wrathful Predation. Although these will be very good with the other build as well. Let's go ahead and switch to that. And I'll show you how much damage that does. Uh, let's see here. It is this one. Yeah, there we go. And we'll go ahead and equip the Wrathful Predation. Now, unfortunately, with this, you will not be able to equip the Protective Polish, or you'll miss out on one of, on some of the other benefits of the actual build. So, you get more damage with these. You're going to crit less, and you're not going to have Protective Polish. But they top out at extremely high damage. It is redonkulous. We're getting 73 for our top end crit, and your base hits actually do as much damage as the Sin Dual Blades. So this is technically going to be more damage than your Sin Dual Blades build without ever even critting. So just keep that in mind. The Wrathful Predation are freaking amazing Dual Blades. You're just not going to crit as much is all it is, really. And But you shouldn't really get any negative crits unless you're not hitting a vulnerable spot, then you'll probably see quite a few negative crits, which is going to equate to negative 25% damage, which is going to suck But, But anyways, that's my anti-bullshit build. I hate getting stuck in roars, and you guys might out there might say, you know, you can roll the roars. Well, bullshit. I've rolled like three roars. You can do it, but nine times out of ten, you're probably not going to end up doing it unless you're staring directly at the monster and able to see exactly when that animation is for the roll. But a lot of the times, you're not going to be in that particular position to see it. And, you know, I don't know. Rolling is just not effective, I don't think. I'd rather have the earplugs. And you can do quite a bit more damage over time by not being locked up in stuns uh, from the roars, as well as being able to flash pod things when they're running away and stuff like that. So your damage on the monster is going to be significantly increased over time by having the earplugs on the build. And then the stun is just a little bit of an added effect. In case you do happen to get hit, you won't get stunned, so you can keep your damage up longer. Anyways, hope you guys all enjoyed the build. If you are new to the channel... Don't forget to subscribe, and if you guys have any interesting builds for me to showcase in the future, feel free to let me know in the comments or in my Discord. There is a link in the description below, so feel free to join, and uh, yeah. I do have quite a few viewer submitted builds that I am working on. Uh, there's a heavy bowgun one, hammer, greatsword, dual blades, 
uh, Longsword, I believe, as well. So I will be showcasing a lot of those. And make sure to subscribe for the Monster Hunter World updates. I try and cover everything as soon as possible. And I've got a lot of information coming out for these spring updates. So make sure to check those out. I'll put links in the description below as well as in the cards for all of the events that you should be focusing on in the spring update. There's a lot of content to cover and it's really going to help if you know which ones to cover. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.